Hey, this is Horner, and we're going to take a look at 18.7 and 18.8. Uh, 18.7 is a little bit different. This is circuit analysis using Kirchhoff's rules. Uh, and I know we've already looked at the two rules for Kirchhoff, but uh, this will really help if we ever have a uh, circuit where we can't simplify it by just replacing parallel and series combinations. Um, and those cases, we're going to have to apply these rules, and, uh, and then we'll have to really look at these two equations and solve them simultaneously. So um, there are several rules here that uh, you can kind of read about in your book. Uh, they want you to replace any series of parallel combinations with their equivalents, assign variables to currents, apply the junction rule to all but one of the junctions, uh, and then uh, apply the loop rule so, uh, to enough loops so that together with the junction equations, you have the same number of equations as unknowns. And then as you go through, you can solve it. Uh, you have to be careful with uh, with signs on this. So for a resistor, if your path through the resistor goes with the current, there's a potential drop. If your path goes against the current, the potential goes up. So this is a, a little bit more complicated. We're going to only do one problem with it, and you won't be assigned any. Uh, you'll just be responsible for this one. Uh, obviously, a lot of different um, a lot of different rules here. Step five, uh, you have to solve the loop and junction equation simultaneously. If your current comes out negative, the direction is opposite to the direction you choose. And uh, then you have to check your result using one or more loops or junctions. Um, so here's a good example. Notice that you have two sources of potential, uh, but you also have three resistors in this, and they all have different resistances. They have two batteries that are different too. So they want us to find the currents through each branch of the circuit and the figure. Uh, this one's pretty simple compared to some of them that are in the uh, in the in this section in your book. Uh, first, we're going to look for series and parallel combinations. Uh, this R1 and E3 are in series, so R1 uh, and E1, sorry I said E3, this is E1, um, are in series, but since only one is a resistor and one is an EMF, you can't replace them with a single uh, circuit element. Uh, no pair of resistors is either in series or in parallel. R1 and R2 might look like they're in parallel, but they're in series for this EMF. Um, so they're really not in, in parallel. Uh, the two EMFs might look like they're in series, but there's a junction point here, and that means that the current can go through. Uh, the two is not the same. And since there's no series or parallel combinations, we have to go to Kirchhoff's rules directly. Uh, so when we look at the Kirchhoff rule here, we're going to look at loop uh, A, B, C, F and A. So we're going to start at A, go to B, go over to C, go back down to F, and then go back through A. So that's your first loop. Uh, so for this one, we're going to do IR1 uh, minus IR2 plus, uh, so there's IR2, and then we're going to add back the battery. On the other side, we've got loop FC, so F to C to D to E to F. And so now this one's going to be positive I2R2 plus I2R3 uh, plus E2. Uh, and that should equal 0. And then here at junction F, we apply the junction rule. And we're just going to say I1 plus I3 minus I2 should be equal to 0. So notice I1 and I3 are going in the same direction. I2 is going in the opposite. All right, so if these all are supposed to be 0, we can say uh, I1 plus I3 minus I2 is equal to 0. And so um, we're going to use that equation. We're going to use equation number 2. So here we've got negative 4 ohms times that I1. So that's negative RI1 minus RI2 uh, plus the voltage in that first battery. This is on the second side. So we probably need to go back and look so you can see these. So here's R1 and R2. Here's R2 and R3. And notice that this voltage and this voltage are different. Uh, if we go back even one more, you can see those voltages. So 1.5 on the left and 3 on the right. Um, so we've got that 1.5 on the left. So these are the leftmost resistor, the middle resistor. Here's the middle resistor again, the right resistor, and then that EMF source here. Uh, so at this point, we can say I1 is equal to negative I3 plus I2, so we just rearrange this equation. 
uh, and then we're going to use the equations we have here to solve simultaneously. Uh, when you get done, uh, you'll notice that you've done a lot of substitution, uh, and then we've got to go through, and we've got two equations here. We're going to subtract one from the other, and you're going to end up with a current of about 0.723 amps um, in that I3, and then in I2 we get about negative 0.139. So those are your two currents uh, that you'll that you see at I2 and I3. So if I solve for equation one. Now I end up with 0.584 amps. Uh, so that's the, the current in number one. So now we've got the current throughout the whole thing. Um, the solution here, we want to round to a couple significant figures. So we're just going to use two places after the decimal. Um, and it says I1 is this, I2 is negative this, and I, I'm sorry, I3 is negative 0.72, and I2 is negative 0.14. And since I3 and I2 came out negative, so I3 and I2, oops, these two came out negative. Uh, the actual directions of the currents in those branches are opposite to the ones that we arbitrarily chose. Um, and so really, that's all I wanted you to see through this. I'd go back and work through it, just kind of see if you can figure it out. Um, but by my, no means are we going to do any out of the back of the book for this. Uh, let's talk a little bit about 18.8. 18.8 is all about power and energy in circuits, so this is a pretty important topic. Uh, and from electric potential, we said if charge moves through a potential difference delta V, then the change in electric potential energy, we said that was UE, electric potential energy, is equal to Q delta V. Remember, this was different for a capacitor. So now we're just looking at electrical energy and not the energy in a capacitor. So from energy conservation, that change in electric means that there's a conversion between two forms of energy and so if you think about a battery it converts that chemical energy and electric potential a resistor converts the electric into internal energy and so those uh, little resistors will actually get kind of warm because they're resisting the flow of electrons so power is really just the rate at which the energy conversion takes place and since current is the rate of flow charge, which is I is equal to Q over delta T, we can say power is equal to the change in energy over time. A change in energy was Q delta V over time. And remember, Q over T is I, which is current. So here, power is equal to IV. One way you can remember this equation is if you've ever had an IV put into your arm, uh, you know that that is very painful. So pain is equal to IV. That's one way to think about it, uh, just if you need to remember it very quickly. The, uh, the other one that we're going to deal with here is power supplied by MEMF. So we've got work is equal to the electromotive force times the charge, uh, and that's the work done by the battery. And so here we can say the power is equal to change in work over change in time. So just from uh, the definition of power. Um, we did say that work is equal to E times Q. So there's our E times Q over T. And so now we've got that EMF times I. So very similar to P is equal to IV. Same type of thing. Um, from the definition of resistance, we know that V is equal to IR. So we talked about that as Ohm's Law. And then we could say that the rate at which energy is dissipated or converted from an organized to a disorganized form and a resistor can be written as this. So here we can also say power is equal to current times voltage. Remember, voltage here is IR. So that's actually I squared R. The other way we can do it is we can, instead of uh, substituting in V, we can substitute in uh, the uh, V for an I. And so current here is equal to V over R. So current in this equation, I would be equal to V over R. So we've substituted that in here. So we've got V over R times V. Uh, and now we end up with V squared over R. So there are three equations that we know of now for power. Uh, power is equal to I times V. Power can be, that's a V and not a U. Be careful. That's power is equal to IV. Uh, power is also equal to I squared R, and finally, power can equal V squared over R. So three equations for power when we're talking about power and electricity. 
Uh, power supplied by EMF with an internal resistance. So if the source does have an internal resistance, the power is going to be less than that, uh, that EMF times the current. And so some of that energy is dissipated in that internal resistance. So here we can kind of reflect that in our, uh, in our equation. Uh, so let's take a look at example 18.9. So this just says a flashlight is powered by two batteries in series. Each has an EMF of one and a half and an internal resistance of 0.1. The batteries are connected to a light bulb by wires of a total resistance of 0.4 ohms. And at normal operating temperature, the resistance of the filament is about 9.7 ohms. So first thing they want us to do is calculate the power dissipated by the bulb. Uh, that's the rate of which energy in the form of heat and light flows away from it. And then finally, calculate the power dissipated by the wires and the net power supplied by the batteries. Uh, a second light then in part C uses uh, four batteries in series and the same resistance wires. A bulb of resistance 42.1 ohms at the operating temperature dissipates about the same amount of power as the bulb in the first flashlight. And they want us just to verify that that power dissipated is nearly the same and calculate the power dissipated by the wires and that power supplied by, um, oops, sorry, supplied by the batteries. So our strategy here is to think about the equations that will help us. So we remember P is equal to I squared R. And then we also have this one for the net power supplied by the batteries. So this is for the power in the wires and in the filament. And then the batteries, we've got to use this one with that internal resistance. Uh, so here is my circuit. This is my cell or my battery. You'll notice that it's all blocked in. Uh, so that's the internal resistor in the battery. And this is the internal resistor in the other battery. So first thing we do is we find the equivalent uh, EMF. We just add the two together. So that'd be three volts. The equivalent resistance here, uh, we just need to add the two. But then remember, we also need to multiply two times 0 0.10, or we could just add 0 0.10 and 0 0.10 again for the internal resistance of the batteries. So our equivalent or total resistance here is 10.3 ohms. And then I is just equal to the EMF divided by the total uh, resistance. So that'd be three divided by 10.3, and we get about 0.2913 amps. So that's for part A. Uh, the rest of part A, the power dissipated by the filament, would be that 0.2913 amps. We have to square it because it's I squared. And then the filament is 9.7 ohms. So that would be 0.823 watts. For letter B, uh, we're going to do the same thing. So here's the power again. There's our uh, equivalent um, current. And then we're going to multiply that times the 0.4 ohms. And we get uh, power dissipated by the wires of 0.034 watts. And then for the battery, we know that the resistance that's equivalent, so we add them two together since they're in series, is 0.2 ohms. And then we can plug everything into our equation. So it would be 3 volts times that, res uh, that current that we found earlier minus that current again times that 0.2 ohms for the uh, equivalent resistance of the batteries. And you end up with 0.857 watts. So that's the power that you had from the batteries. So in the second circuit, you are now you've got six volts, and we've added all the resistors together. Uh, and we're going to then solve for current. And we just take six divided by that total resistance, and we get 0.13986 amps. So the power dissipated by that filament would be that uh, current running through the filament, which is 0.13986 amps. We've got a square multiplied times the resistance in that filament. You get 0.824 watts. So that's only about 0.1% more than the filament in the first flashlight, which isn't a ton. Uh, the power dissipated by the wires, we find out that it's about 0.078 watts. So we just took that equivalent current again, uh, multiply it times the, the resistance. And then finally, for the battery, uh, we end up with about 0.831 watts. And that really is the end of sections 18.7 and 18.8. We'll look at 18.9 next time where we're going to measure currents and voltages.